Welcome to Math with Professor V. I found an integral that I thought would be fun to solve for our latest integral of the day. So here we go. Indefinite integral of tan inverse of x over x squared dx. So if you want to play around with it for a little bit, go ahead, pause the video. I'm just going to start right off the bat and tell you we have to do integration by parts. There's just no way around it. No u sub is going to work because the argument here is just x right? And then this x squared in the denominator is not being very helpful. So let's go ahead and when we have an inverse trig function like this, majority of the time that's what u let equal u. So u is tan inverse of x and then dv is going to be everything that's left over which is 1 over x squared dx. But I'm going to rewrite it as x to the negative second dx because I know I'm going to have to take its antiderivative in a hot second. Okay, so now let's find du. Remember, derivative of tan inverse of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Don't forget to put the dx. So if it's du, you should have a dx on the other side. Same thing, look. dv dx. And then v is going to be antiderivative of x to the negative second. So add 1 to the exponent. That'll make it x to the negative first and then divide by the new exponent. I'll just put a negative in the front like that. All right, very nice. So now we can rewrite everything as u times v. I'm gonna put negative one over x in the front and then tan inverse of x. So there's no confusion as to what the argument is, okay? So if you have like an extra term being multiplied, always put it in the front. Okay, u times v minus, and then we have v du, this product right here. And since there's another negative in that product, I'm going to switch this to a plus integral. 1 over 1 plus x squared dx times x to the negative first. That's the same as times 1 over x. Okay, so take a second. Are you okay with how things are being rewritten? I hope so. You know, this looks a little wobbly. Let's get it to straighten its act out. 1 plus x squared. Okay, now how to deal with this new integral. I'm looking. It's a rational function. It's as factored as could be. There is no u sub to do, so it's partial fraction time. Ooh, okay, partial fraction decomp time. So let's go ahead, let's list out the integrand. Let's rewrite it on the left, one over. I'm gonna put the x first, okay? And then we'll have one plus x squared. And then the denominators in the decomposition will be x and one plus x squared. Okay, so anytime there's a linear factor in the denominator, you just have a constant in the top a. And then one plus x squared, that's an irreducible quadratic. So we're gonna have bx plus c over here. And then in the next step, I multiply everybody by the LCD. So x and 1 plus x squared. And then let's see, on the left-hand side, I'll just have 1. And then I have a times 1 plus x squared plus, don't forget parentheses, bx plus c times x. Once you distribute this, right? Good. To solve from here, you need to distribute everything. So 1 equals a plus ax squared plus bx squared plus cx. And then we're going to set the coefficients for the like terms on both sides of the equations equal to each other. And then we'll solve for the constant. So watch what I mean. The highest power of x I see in this equation right here is x squared. So do you see any x squareds on the left hand side over here? I don't see a single one. I got zero of them. Okay. And then what are the coefficients of x squared on the right hand side? I have a x squared plus b x squared. So zero has to equal a plus b. What about x to the first? I don't see any x to the first on the left. Do you see any x to the first on the right hand side? Yes, there's c x to the first. And then lastly, we have our constants. Do you see any constants on the left? Yes, we have one. <laughs> and then do we have any constants on the right-hand side? Yes, a is our constant. It's not attached to any variable. So one equals a. So now that I know one is a, 
then that means B is negative one. Ooh, and then I'm re ready to rewrite everything, okay? So up above, we had all that. Negative one over X, tan inverse of X, okay. So now we have negative one over X, tan inverse of X plus integral. And then A is one, so I'll have one over X minus one X over one plus X squared. One X over one plus X squared DX. Good? How are we doing so far? Okay, so do you know the antiderivative of one over X? Yes. What about antiderivative of X over one plus X squared? If you're an especially pro student, you probably already can do the little U sub in your head and jump to the final answer. In case you can't, I'll walk you through the steps. This one we should know, right? That's ln absolute value of x. Minus, I already can see this one's gonna be one half ln absolute value one plus x squared. And where did I get that from? Oh my goodness, I'll do it together off to the side. But pretty much if you're at that point, you're done with the problem, aren't you? Plus c. You're done. If you can't see that, then off to the side, I would do a little u sub, okay? But remember, we already used up the variable u, so this is a t sub. This is a t sub. Notice that the degree of x in the denominator is one higher than in the numerator. So we can go ahead, we can let t equal 1 plus x squared, and then dt is 2x dx. So 1 half dt is x dx. Very good. And then here I can rewrite this now as 1 half dt over t. So this is 1 half ln absolute value of t. I'm going to say plus d because I already used plus c a second earlier in the problem. And then that's 1 half ln 1 plus x squared plus d. So how did I know that so quickly without actually going through this work? Well, I just kind of imagined, oh, if I did the substitution, I know I'm going to get 2x. And since I don't have a 2 here, I'm going to have to divide by it. And then everything else will just be basically like 1 over my variable, which is natural log of all of that. And I just added in the 1 half. Okay. So here's basically our final answer. Now, if you're inclined, you can use some log properties and clean it up a bit more. Okay. So I want to show you if you're in that sort of a mood. I'm trying to copy paste this guy down below. And I mean, just check with your instructor how simplified they would like things. Um, as far as my class, I always let them know when we're practicing. Okay, so another way, alternatively, you could write this is just leave that negative one over x, tan inverse of x alone. And then here, what we're gonna have to do is take this negative one half and write it as the exponent, okay? I'll leave it as negative, that's fine. Plus ln absolute value of x minus ln absolute value one plus x squared to the one half power plus c. And then do you remember your log properties? If you have ln of a minus ln of b, you could write that as ln of a divided by b. So that's precisely what we're gonna do here. It's like this whole thing is a and this whole thing is b. Okay, so then we can write this as negative one over x tan inverse of x plus ln absolute value x over, I'm just going to write rad instead, one plus x squared in the denominator plus c. So that looks like a little more cleaned up. I don't know. Do you have a preference? Tell me. In the comments below, which version of the final answer do you prefer? This one here or, or this one here without using log properties? Let me know. You also could solve this integral using trig sub. So if anyone would like to see that next, let me know. I can do the same problem again via a different method, which is cool, okay? 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you need full length calculus lectures or even algebra review, you can look out the playlists that are on my YouTube channel. Everything's organized sequentially. And you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. Love you all. I'll be back soon.